Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Ref6 Weekly. Uh, I am your host Hassan Rajwani. I'm a level five referee from England and I am joined as always by my co-host John. I'm a level four referee from Sussex in England. And Rimon? Yeah, I'm a level three referee from Denmark. How are you guys doing? All good? All right. Yeah, all good, mate. Transfer deadline day yesterday, all finished. No signings for Newcastle as expected. Um, in other news, in refereeing, in the refereeing world, um, the only major kind of news that's come out this week is uh, the um, Slovenian referee, Damir Skamina, has unfortunately had to retire due to injury. He's been injured for a while and hasn't been able to overcome it. So he's decided to retire. He's a, a pretty great referee, um, one of the top European referees and has actually done the Champions League final. He did the Tottenham Liverpool um, game from a few years ago where actually he awarded a penalty in the in inside 20 seconds in the game. Um, so uh, awesome career. Um, will be sadly missed on the European stage, but also gives an opportunity for other referees to come through as well. So great career for him. But uh, as we're going to go uh, through some major incidents from the Premier League from the weekend, there's uh, the, there's quite a few to talk about, so we'll, we'll, we'll rattle through those and then uh, we'll, we'll get to our main topic uh, at the end, which is all around serious foul play. So um, I think the biggest talking point from the weekend was the Paul Pogba challenge, but we're going to hold off on that for a second um, and talk about some of the others. Actually, secondly, I think the Reese James one is probably also up there too. So let's start there. Um, John, do you want to, can you explain what happened in that incident? Yeah, so uh, I think it came from a corner. The ball's come in. Um, there's been a header towards goal. I think it's Jota, uh, but it doesn't matter about the player. Reese James is standing on the line, as you know most right-backs do. Uh, on the post to stop it. So it's beating Mendy and then it's hit Reese James's arm. And the more you look at it, Reese James has sort of pumped his arm forward towards the ball as if he was like uppercutting someone almost. Um, and it wasn't, nothing was given. VAR got involved and said, Anthony Taylor, I think you should look at the screen. And if it is a handball, then, you know, a red card should follow and a red card did follow. Um, Rich James got sent off in, I think it was the 47th minute of the Liverpool game. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to um, just add, so what it did actually, or from what I saw was it hit the Rich James's knee first and then went onto his hand. Right. And obviously the handball law states that if there is a deflection from their body onto the hand, it shouldn't be given as, as a, a handball. So, <laughs> Why was it given, I guess, is the question. And I've got my own opinion. I think you've described it, right? Is the motion that Reese James actually, it didn't just hit him, his hand actually moved almost to, not to save it, but it, it definitely moved, right? Roman, what are your thoughts on it? Did you think, did you think penalty red card or did you think no, no? I have some mixed feelings about this. Because, um, as you said, I think it hits his thigh and then his, his arm afterwards. No penalty there, of course. But he had this uh, forward motion with his arm. I just don't think, when I'm looking at the replay, I don't think the ball uh, was... I mean, if he really did hit it with his arm and made the forward motion, I would think that the ball would have uh, gone a bit further. Okay. But I just didn't see... It, it, the ball moved further, so um, so it's a, that's why I have mixed feelings about it because I think it's a penalty. But when I'm looking at the replay again and again, I don't even think it's a penalty because it's a normal reaction from the player. Um, after it hits him, he just like I mean, <laughs> uh, tries to do something with his body, and I don't I don't think the ball moved that much uh, forward. So. In my opinion, eight percent. I no no wait. Sixty percent, not penalty, and forty percent penalty. Um, if we're gonna discuss red card, definitely not a red card. Definitely not a red card. Okay, interesting. Because I got I, I. Even if you give a penalty, you're not gonna give a red card. No, it's a normal. I mean, he didn't. It wasn't even on its way into the goal, right? It was. It hit his 
it hit his body body first and it was up here the ball Whoa. And, and he did a small motion with his arm so i i think it was a bit harsh to give him a red card that's just my opinion i just think it, it was a bit harsh to give him a red card maybe penalty we can argue for why it's a penalty but the red card uh, i mean we're talking about two big clubs we're talking about an experienced referee here we're talking about a huge de decision that needs to be taken here uh, i don't think he spent enough time on the vr maybe we can talk about that as well uh, we would always talk about why does he they spend so much time on the VAR, right? And and this time he spends like seconds. He just looked at it, and um, <laughs> so there's a lot of things here um, that we can discuss. But uh, the penalty can be argued for, but red card, I think it was a bit harsh. That's super interesting, Ramon, because I'm going to have to disagree with you. Uh, finally, I think I don't know if I agree with you much more. For me, I think if you decide it's a penalty because it's uh, a deliberate action or a, a handball, the ball to me is going in the back of the net. So therefore, Reese James has denied a goal by by hand, which is a red card offence in law, right? So if I, I think there are only two outcomes of this incident. It's either a no penalty or it's a penalty and a red card. I don't think there's any in between. But that's my, uh, I feel like John's in, in agreement. And uh, Rimon, we're going to hand you out to draw on this one. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's because we, me and Rimon agreed last week, so we have to disagree this week. <laughs> um, my, I think Rimon's right in terms of, you know, it comes off Rhys James' thigh and then hits his arm first. But I think the issue is Rhys James then moves his arm again and it strikes his arm a second time. And therefore, the deflection doesn't count because... You know, he's had the benefit of the doubt the first time and then the motions happen. So there's the second motion is off, not off his arm. It's hit his arm and then he's going again for his arm. So therefore, mm. the penalty is given. In terms of the red card, I think it's spot on because even if Reese James like doesn't get out of the way, or if Reese James gets out of the way and it doesn't hit Reese James's hand, it goes in because <laughs> say he has to reach for it the ball had enough power off Rhys James's thigh to still hit the back of the net because he is on the line and there's no covering defender, there's no one behind it, the keeper's out of shot. So therefore, he has denied a goal-scoring, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. So the red card is correct. And the only thing Rim and I agree with is it doesn't feel like it should be a red card, right? It doesn't feel like it. It's not the same as Suarez in the World Cup where he literally saves the ball, right? Which is what the that that red card is is designed for, but it's just, a, in my opinion, it's the way the law's written is that has to be a red card if you give it as a handball, but we, we can agree to disagree. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah that, but that's fine. I mean, it's, uh, I just think it was a huge game and they're giving a red card at that time. I mean, the penalty should be enough, give me a yellow card and move on, but, but yeah, the law is the law, right? Um, I just I'm just a bit disappointed that he didn't take his time on the on the on the review. Uh, well, I mean, not doing that uh, uh, and those penalties in a red card and not looking and uh, taking his time and looking at the review will just cause a lot of troubles, uh, a lot of discussions yeah. Uh, yeah. from from one, yeah of course from the Chelsea side, right? I mean, why did he spend enough time? I haven't been looking and reading other places why. So I don't know if you guys have... Well, I, I think that's interesting, right? And I, I need to caveat this by saying, like, I, I can't remember. Did did the screen show him actually walk over and then literally look and walk away? Or did it cut to him as he was walking away? Can you remember? Sure. I, saw, I saw like one or two frames and that's it. As could, far as I remember, we might be, um, we might be being misconstrued by the media here. Like, if if we might not have seen the full Anthony Taylor fully sat and um, looking at it, right? It could be that you know they've just cut to it at the wrong most uh, unfortunate time, but maybe maybe not, right? Maybe he was there only a few seconds. What you've got to remember is that the VAR is going to be talking to Anthony Taylor. As he's walking over to the to the um, to the camera, yeah, to the yeah. screen. and I did see a shot of Anthony Taylor when the incident happened, and he was completely uh, obstructed. Like he was looking through, he was at a different angle, looking for a lot of players. So what he's probably thinking is, or hearing is, 
this is an incident I've missed. It's not even an incident that I'm, you know, the, okay, I've given a yellow and it's a red. I've, you know, this is an incident I've completely missed. The VAR are telling me what it is. I'm going to go over there. I, I've seen the handball now on the screen quickly. That's all I need to do. Um, I, I think they told him there was a handball, but it was a penalty. But I think they just showed him the frame of Rich James just moving his arm forward. You know, the forward. But that, I think, and I think when he saw Rich James doing that, I think he thought that's, that's enough for a penalty, right? And a red card. So yeah. maybe that was enough for him to, to view it. He didn't need to see the rest of it. And it's really funny, right? Because we, like many of the fans say VAR takes a long time. So when it actually takes a real quick time, they get on the, they get on the back of it as well. So yeah. I, I don't think there's a win. But again, just on VAR, because Newcastle had another penalty given by VAR at the weekend, again, correctly. Um, but Steve Bruce mentioned, and you can take what Steve Bruce says with a pinch of salt, but Steve Bruce mentioned that of the 60 VAR like decisions, I can't remember if that's the exact number, but 60, six have, have only stayed with the on-field decision. There are 54 have been um, overturned, right? Or changed or, or given, right? So what's interesting there is the first year of the VAR in the Premier League was the VAR was telling the referee what to do and they'd make the decision. They wouldn't go over to the screen. Now they're going over to screen. Like 90% of the time, they're actually going with what VAR says. So is it worth considering now that the VARs have, and the referees have got used to the protocol, is it worth now considering in the future going back to what the Premier League first did, which was not going over to the screen? Just, just setting I, I think Premier League was the only league that the where the referees didn't go to the uh, mm -hmm. VAR review uh, area and, and looked at the video, right? Because I I know from the Danish league they did that all the time. Uh, we wanted to have the referees go over and, and have a review of it because it's the referee's decision in the end, right? Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that's definitely the stance from FIFA. Um, in the same game, I can't work out the minute because the video is quite fuzzy. But um, Liverpool, Chelsea were on the attack. Um, Lukaku makes a shot that gets uh, blocked. Liverpool are playing the ball out, out of their box. And there's a coming together with Mason Mount, the tail of the referee, um, that John has asked us to talk about. Um, because there's a potential like push or does the anti Taylor just get in the way and Mason Mount's like blocking himself out of it. Um, to me, this is kind of a non-goer non for me, but John, what, what, what are your thoughts? Why did you bring it up? Did you see many people talking about it? Yeah, so obviously doing the research for the podcast, I look on, you know, the dark web of Twitter and see what people are saying. And um, along with the, one of the other decisions, this one popped up quite a bit about Mason Mount touching an official. So I don't remember any, I watched the game and I don't remember anything sort of like, oh, that's quite interesting. And when I first looked for it, I thought it'd be from the penalty, but obviously this popped up and uh, I thought it was quite interesting because equivalently he has shoved Anthony Taylor out of the way. Shoved is a strong man. Well, <laughs> he's put some force into it, but in my opinion, it's, I think it's fair game because I think Anthony Taylor is in the way. And I think he's just sort of like, pushed I him, out, I pushed him aside out. to be like, get out of the way. I've got yeah. I think it's more of an ushering him out the way like I, I'm gonna run into you. I need to like put my but I don't know. Ramon, did you think anything of this? Uh, I mean I think the only reason for why John brought this up because he's a Liverpool fan. I mean <laughs> I mean there's nothing there. I no, mean, I don't think so either. But I saw a lot of people. Um got a red Chelsea got a red card, what more do you want? I mean you could just have scored a second goal and that's it. <laughs> I mean, if Liverpool won on that game, you probably haven't brought this up. Yeah, you probably not. No. Red card for the Chelsea player, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Let's move on. I don't think there was anything there. I just yeah. far off my way. I agree. I agree. I agree. So we've got three more incidents to go through. So the first one was from Arsenal, Man City, uh, a pretty good game of football. But um, should Man City have been down to 10 men? There was an incident... Um, during um, what looks like a free kick, uh, attacking free kick to Man City, where the ball's come in. And as the ball's coming in, there is a 
a swing of the arm from Laporte onto one of the Arsenal's, I think it's Rob Holding. Or Callum Chambers, Callum Chambers. And um, it looks naughty, but how naughty? Um, what do you guys think? Oh, I was actually watching that game. Um, I, I still can understand how he allowed it. I mean, it's so obvious what he's doing. I have seen, I don't know if it's because of the new line, but I've seen other games where they got free kick or even sent off just or get a second yellow card just by by accident, uh, in my opinion, uh, ha having an arm uh, on another pair. I, I just, I mean, looking at the replay again and again, just makes it more and more obvious for me that should be definitely a red card uh, for Leporte and the goal shouldn't be allowed as well. Uh, I don't know if it's just me. I, I wrote in my notes what, uh, WTF because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's going on? Why wasn't this looked at? I mean... So was this in the build-up to which goal? The first goal? Second goal. Second. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Um, John, what are your thoughts? So, so let's let's start. We think it's a foul. Yes. Yeah. The goal should have been disallowed. So that's the first start. So we're all in agreement. So now we're just going to figure out sanction, right? So it sounds like Raymond is thinking red. Yeah. Okay. Joe. I thought I think it's the red. <laughs> he just uh, don't want to agree with me, so he's going to just say. No, red. I I <laughs> think the law states that if you raise your hands to a player's face. As far as I am, I can't wait to be corrected. But I'm pretty sure as, if you raise your hand to a player's face, you should be sent off um, for violent conduct. Um, it doesn't matter how hard it is. Your realistically hands shouldn't be anywhere near his face, even if they are tussling. So, yeah, I'd probably go with Rimmel. So, the only thing I can see is I don't think it's a fist. I think it's like an open palm, right? Do you agree with that or not? Mm, I think it's I think it's halfway in between. Yeah, halfway into into the first year. So I I, I think you can. I I, I think they're, they're telltale signs, right? An uh, 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 open palm means it's more of a push to try and get the person out of the way, versus a, a fist is a punch, right? I think there's a lot of force in this, and, and I think I could probably see a red card here as well. So, yeah. So, but but then maybe, but but again, it's some like John was kind of yellow red. I was kind of yellow red, and therefore it's not clear and obvious, right? But well, nothing was given. So a free kick, right? Yeah, it's a free kick. I mean, it's not clear if it's a red card or a yellow card, but it's it says a foul in the build up to a goal and should have been uh, ruled out. That's for sure. And then actually, there's an opportunity there for the referee to go over and review it because it's been disallowed and then he could, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 we'll agree. And we'll jump on to, um, no, we, we'll hold Pogba's challenge for, for the end. It's very similar. Um, but John's found uh, an incident from the uh, Burnley Leeds game, which I'm going to be honest, I didn't watch and I haven't watched the highlights. So, uh, but I've seen the incident. Um, and there was a coming together with Ashley Barnes, um, with a Leeds uh, defender, Dallas, as Dallas is clearing the ball in his own go in his own goal area, um, what looks like Ashley Barnes is obviously trying to play the ball, trying to stop uh, Dallas from um, clearing it, and he, you know, the ball is being is bouncing, so Dallas is kicking the ball probably at like hip height, and Ashley Barnes comes in pretty quickly, makes contact with. Dallas on the what I would like to call the ankle with his studs. Um, a, a yellow card was given. Go on, you go first. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think that as Barnes foot was high up. I mean, obviously, it hits Dallas in his uh, ankle, but his ankle was way above the ground, right? Uh, so uh, I think it's serious foul play here. Um, uh, I think, I mean, so let's go a bit back to the Man City Arsenal game. I think there was a red card for Shaka, right? And in, in that game. Yeah. And if you remember the red card for why Shaka got a red card, right? 
and compared to this one. No, I disagree with that. I think Xhaka's challenge yeah. as well. But I, I, in my opinion, this was a red card as well. I yeah. think he was, it was a dangerous play. He was going with a huge force and then his leg was high up. So, yeah. I mean, I think if I'm looking, if I will open the law book right now, I think definitely a red card. It was, say, a red card there. So, go on, John. Um, you can, the ball is there to be won because Stuart Dallas doesn't have control of the ball. And, um, the only problem is, I think, is that the speed and where Ashley Barnes comes from, he almost comes out of nowhere. Like, so the ball is there to be won, so you can understand why Michael Oliver gave you a card. There, the ball is, you know, not in control. But I just think he's come in so quickly and so high. But I also think the ball is partly gone when Ashley Barnes arrives at the scene. Mm-hmm. I agree that Xhaka's uh, challenge is easily a red card and different to this one, but I do also think this is a red card. Interesting. I think you can sell both. So you're going yellow. <laughs> well, you always like that. You always go both. <laughs> on the fence. On the fence. I'm, I'm okay with the yellow because I don't think the force. It, he comes in at speed, but I just don't think like that. The intensity of the challenge was that bad. Like, and I think it's lucky that Dallas had his foot in the air. If his foot was planted. And it was on the floor. I think it would be worse because you've got the impact, you know, the, 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 you know what I mean? Whereas yeah, yeah. puts in the air, he can kind of take the impact a little bit. So he might have been helped in that sense. So I'm kind of okay with the yellow, but I, I think it's orangey for sure. That's a, that's a red. This, <laughs> this gets us on one of the bigger talking points. And obviously Graham Sunes had his, uh, say for sure when it comes to Paul Pogba um, but it was in the build up to Man United's goal, they win the ball back I think it's Ruben Neves in the middle of the park as the ball um, going in for a challenge with Pogba and it looks like Pogba it studs up with force and kind of gra- I'm going to say grazes the shin of Ruben Neves as Ruben Neves is going to kick through the ball and then the ball breaks into um uh, the Man U, Man U players, and they get get through, and Mason Greenwood scores a fantastic goal. Um, ah, this one is real difficult for me, I think. Um, but, uh, I, not- I, what I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, the Man U fan. Yeah. What I'm going to start with, again, is do we think it's a foul? Yes. Roman? Uh, I mean, I mean, if there were con- if there was a contact, yeah, definitely. I, I just had a hard time seeing if there were contact or not. Okay, uh, so I think it's a foul, but it's really difficult because I actually think. So this is how I would describe it, and you tell me if I'm wrong. I think Pogba has gone in and his studs his foot high, right, to potentially win the ball and maybe block the ball, right. And Ruben Neves is kicked, gone to kick the ball, and it's not there, and he's almost kicked into Pogba's foot, right? It's almost the contact is initiated by the Wolves player, but the but Paul Pogba's foot is there and it's it shouldn't be there, right? Do you agree with that or not really? So the 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 contact was initiated by the Wolves player. That's not to say it's not a foul. So I think it's a foul. And then, and it's high up, it's on a shin, I've said that. I don't think it's excessive force. And the reason I don't think it's excessive force is he barely touched him, right? He got his, he got his shin, the contact was made, initiated by the Wolves player. So therefore, I think it's a, a foul and probably a yellow card. But that means it should have been nil-nil and the goal should have been disallowed. Do you... Think yellow or red or just a foul? Oh, I think you could sell just a foul, to be quite honest. I think it's one of those ones where they both go in for it. One player wins it. The other player's slightly late to the party. And you could just be like, yep, free kick. Thank you. Because it's what in the defense, it would have been the defensive third for Wolves. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those ones you can blow the whistle and get out of there as quick you as you can. Even the fact that it was quite high up. I 
wouldn't worry too much about that at that time. I think you could just blow the whistle and be like, yep, foul. Because as soon as, you know he's not injured, because as soon as Man United scored, Rui Neves was up quite quickly and ready and raring to go to congratulate the referee. So um, I think if you had blown the whistle for a foul, Rui Neves would have just jumped up and then played the ball forward. Okay, Rimon, the man you found. I think there's a few things here to consider. One, the reaction from the, I don't know if we said that, the reaction from the Wolverhampton player. I mean, he was looking at the referee and then he was down. (laughs) Uh, So that could have something to do with it. Why foul? But again, I've said it many times, uh, the new line from the referees, I mean, if it was last season, 100%, he would have given uh, given a free kick here, 100%. I'm just still trying to figure out what the line is because looking at the incidents from this podcast so far, I mean, uh, there's like all of them I don't get. All of them I don't understand the 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 the, the decisions from the referees. I mean, there's a lot of things to consider here. I mean, why didn't they give a free kick? Why didn't they give a red card? Why was there nothing there? I mean, and we can keep discussing that. But the fact is, there's a new line. We don't know about it. Only the Premier League referees know about it, and we just need to get used to it. Probably, uh, I, I mean, this is the new Premier League. I, I, I would have given a free kick here, definitely. Uh, but I'm glad he didn't. But I'm just trying to figure out where the line goes because yeah. I'm having a hard time understanding it. No, fair enough. Um, so I think we're definitely a foul, possibly a yellow. Um, Never a red. <laughs> Never a red. Never read because of the force for me, but I can see, yeah, I agree, never read. So, but from the incidents, we had a couple of these. So, obviously, Pogba, Ashley Barnes, um, Jacka, which we didn't discuss, Jacka, um, which we didn't discuss, which was a two footed challenge, right? Um, so it brings us on to a quick topic that we'll, we'll discuss, which is serious foul play. So, um, and Rimmon actually used that phrase when he when he saw one of the incidents earlier. So what is it was the Ashley Barnes one, right? Yeah, Ashley yeah. Barnes one. Yeah. So what is serious foul play? What are the things that judge and what are the major um uh, boxes that need to be ticked, as it were? What are the, the things that you look for? And I, I I'm gonna be honest, I haven't given many red cards in my career for serious foul play. Um maybe a handful in a few hundred games. So um, so maybe I'm poor at finding them or maybe I just I just have been lucky and fortunate enough not to get too many in my games. The ones that I did have, I remember to this day because I, I never, never reacted so quickly and get hot out because I was just like, oh, that is disgusting. Easy red, let's go. Um, but... Do you want to talk for him on maybe some of the things that you look for when, when you think serious foul play? Have you had many? I actually haven't had a single one. Uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, maybe I'm on the same board here. I, uh, but 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 I mean uh, I would probably look at the force right, like from the player. Uh, I would look at uh, like how he come, how or she, she uh, he or she comes in to the tackle. Because uh, uh, in, in in Denmark we we use three things like. Uh, uh, three levels. Uh, uh, like, was it a normal, free, uh, normal force, or was it a, a bit ruthless, or very, very harsh, uh, very, very uh, aggressive? Um, and uh, yeah, so that's one of them. I mean, I'm looking at the force. Uh, also, is the player look, going for the ball or not? I mean, is he trying? Is he trying to play the ball, or is it just going uh, after the uh, the opponent here? So I haven't had many of them, but um, we, I see a lot of I see a lot of them in Premier League. So, <laughs> and uh, the words you use there, we use similar. We have careless, reckless, and excessive force as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to add on. So, so you've you mentioned force um, in the Ashley Barnes one. We talked about speed, right? The speed that the player enters the challenge. I'll add one more in before going to John, which is. Um, point of contact where's the point of contact made um with the with the uh the opponent is it low down on their toes or foot which mo- doesn't necessarily mean it's not serious foul play but if it's higher up the shin the knee the thigh 
that's going to be a lot more of a warning sign. Um, go on, John. Some more for you? I think you've covered them all. I've given quite a few of these um, challenges. I think one of the key ones is to look at the tempo of the game. Mm-hmm. It makes a... It shouldn't affect... I know you shouldn't sway your decision. I've got to word this very carefully, but say the tempo of the game is very high, players are at each other's almost throats, really. You know that if that's a big challenge, then the chances are it's not, you know, being in the spirit of the game, as FIFA would say. And it probably is a serious foul play challenge because the players are going in full throttle. If the game is a low tempo game and there's not really anything going on about it, you probably know that it's not serious foul play because there's nothing really, for him to go in that hard. You know, look at players, are they tussling? So, for example, on Saturday, we had two players tussling. The 11 and the 6 were at each other all game. You know, there will be a big challenge in there somewhere. And if they get it wrong, it is serious foul play. Um, So, look at players, are they jostling? Look at the tempo of the game. And I think, obviously, when the challenge goes in, speed, contact is, is crucial, really. Is both feet on the ground? Because if as soon as he leaves the ground, he's then declared out of control and then he's not in control of his actions. So wherever he hits the player, he's not in control um, is another key point. And, and that in control is important because, you know, there's the, the phrase two-footed, right? Yeah. So that's what Jacques was this weekend, uh, you know. And what that really means is the player's left the ground. As soon as he's left the ground and there's no, no part of contact with the floor... It means it's completely out of control. You can't control your body when you're in the air and therefore you're endangering the safety of the opponent. And the only other thing to add is um, when what what I see a lot of in in terms of serious foul play happens is when a player, uh, and this happened actually in the West, this was the exact thing that happened uh, with Iosley Perez in West Ham Leicester was the ball is miscontrolled. As soon as that ball's miscontrolled, the player who's miscontrolled it is stretching to get it back and the opponent is going in quickly to try and win the ball because he's sniffing a chance, right? And one of those challenges to win that ball that it, that's kind of a 50-50 may result in a serious foul play challenge. And therefore... Um, use that as something like if you see someone miscontrol like get your spidey senses out and just like slow it down and just try and get a great angle at what that that challenge is about to go in so um great well guys thank you very much i've got one more question and it's for john you had a game this week on bank holiday and i saw there was two thousand people in the crowd yeah. it's pretty nuts for for kind of the level that we operate at really two thousands a lot right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, how does it feel? Did it did it change the game for you? Was it more nerve wracking? Was it more fun? Did it did did it have any impact at all? Or yeah. Did it more motivating, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I had a local derby, um, which you'll see in the Ref Six vlogs that will come out in a couple of weeks, a week or two time. Um, so I had a local derby on Bank Holiday, and it had two thousand two hundred people there. Um, The game, you know, going into it will be probably feisty, but you know that the two teams play football, so the problem isn't going to be on the pitch. It's going to be behind you. And I had a couple of drunk lads behind me that basically battered me for the better part of 100 minutes. Um, And it was quite funny. Uh, You know, I obviously have long hair, which is a referee very unheard of. So I got, oh, the referee's worth it, sponsored by L'Oreal. I wish I had hair like that. Um, you know, I also stick your flag up line. Oh, and if I got it wrong, I got hammered, you know, the usual profanities that follow. Um, but it is, it, it's weird because it makes you stay more focused because you know that people are watching you and you know that you have more eyes on you all yeah. the time because you have, you have fans all the way up the line. So you know you have to be in line because someone will call you out. I got into a little bit of trouble for smiling because I was enjoying myself and they were like, you shouldn't be smiling because, you know, it's it's not unprofessional. But if the home fans, it might seem that you're celebrating with the home fans or... Who, you know, who said that you... Who told you off for smiling? The Bogner manager. He was like, oh. why are you smiling? At halftime, he was like, why are you smiling? I was like, I don't know. Just having fun, mate. 
and he wasn't really impressed. And you know that's a good point, but I also think that. But weren't they winning? No, not half time. It was nil nil. But I also think that he is just a very angry person anyway. So you have to deal with that as it comes. And I think he was upset that I didn't give his player a, a free kick right in front of me, even though he's like 60 yards away. So, you know, it's an occasion that you have to manage and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, good, good. I thought I'd get that in. Um, for everyone out there, um, thanks for listening as always. Um, I plugged it last week so I'll plug it this week we've got and John mentioned it we've got some match day vlogs that we've been recording about our games uh, we're chucking on YouTube so um, definitely try it out this week's one was actually John um, actually going and running the line in the National League South which is a, a big step up for John so uh, a great watch actually um, yeah. So uh, get get on YouTube, just search for Ref6. You'll see the match day vlogs there. And um, uh, we'll be back next week to discuss more incidents. It is international break, so we'll, we'll be having an international flavour, I guess, next week. Or we'll, we might try and find some grassroots or non-league stuff to look at and to, to discuss. But uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week.